Hi guys, I wanted to share with you revelation that the Holy Spirit has given me on uh, life preservers. Well, it's not on life preservers, but that's what he used to show me this concept. He showed me that there is a section of this world, some people who do not know Jesus as Lord. They need the life preserver to be thrown to them. They need to be introduced to Jesus. Then there is a section within the church who have accepted the life preserver and they acknowledge the fact that their sins needed to be forgiven, but that's as far as it goes. So they know him as, as a forgiver, redeemer, savior. And so they cling on to that life preserver. But the thing is with these people is that if the storms get rough enough and the water starts tumbling and winds blowing, they might let go of the life preserver and get pulled under. The third type of people are the people who understand the concept of Christ in us. So these are the people that have uh, acknowledged Jesus as Lord, asked him to come into their life, have accepted the Holy Spirit and invited him to come and reign in them. What he started to show me was that these people actually intake the life preserver and they become a life preserver. So what does the life preserver do in us? It helps us to rise above the waterline. It keeps us above the storms of life. We are destined to rise when that life preserver is in us. See, we do not have an external God that we need to pray to help us save us anymore when we are in Christ because he is in us, our spirits are one, and there is no separating us ever again. That is the hope that we have. We know without a doubt that we are one, that he goes with us into any situation we find ourselves in. We don't go as orphans. We do not go as, as, um, uh, Runaways, we don't go as uh, uh, orphans. We aren't, we aren't orphans. We don't need somebody to come and embrace us because he has. He's embraced us, he has accepted us, he has adopted us. We are his sons and daughters. And we, we go from seeing him as savior to seeing him as father. And that makes all the difference in the world. So what I started to see is that um, I was seeing a lot of people on the riverbanks and they are looking at this river of God. And this river of God is not a tame river. No, it is like the waves are crashing. It's like whitewater rafting, like river. It's crazy wild, but God is in it. And he's saying, come. Many people are standing on the shores. It's their comfort zone. And they are waiting and praying, God, send the raft along that I am supposed to get on. Bring the boat with the people on that I'm supposed to get on to, to enter into this. And I hear God saying, step out. You don't need anybody else. You don't need a life preserver to come and, and take you into those waters because you are the life preserver and you need to stop waiting on the riverbank and start wading into what I have for you. And so he's calling us deeper and deeper and deeper. So what I started to see is that there are frustrating situations that we all find ourselves in and you know exactly the ones that I'm talking about they are the ones that you have cried the most tears over they are the 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 ones that make you just say I don't know what to do I've tried everything and you know what you probably have but what is impossible for man is possible with God and if he is in you 
He knows what to do in this situation. He knows how to handle it. He was never caught off guard or not knowing what to do. And the situations that you're walking through are no surprise to him. He knows exactly what you are because he's in it with you. There's no separation. He's in it with you. You can't get rid of him if you tried. He's with you forever. So in those situations, instead of saying, I don't know what to do and going into that helpless victim mode, realize you carry the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead on the inside of you. And he knows how he wants to handle this situation. And he wants to burn a fire in you that is gonna come out through your eyes, out through your ears, out through your mouth, and love through your heart. He wants to be your hands in the very situations that you are the most frustrated with. And I, I feel, and I can say this from my own experience, it's those situations where you have said, God, I need you to change this situation because I don't know what to do anymore. And he is saying, that's because I need to use you in the situation to change it. And the question is, are we willing? Are we willing to yield to him in those situations and let him do what he wants to do through it, right? Because how can a situation not be changed if you are carrying God into it? See, the problem isn't the fact that God isn't with us. It's the fact that we don't understand how with us he is and what he is capable of. We need to view him as bigger than we've been viewing him and letting him enter the situations in our life through us by not being intimidated by the darkness anymore, realizing that we carry the brightest light of all on the inside of us and that he wants to partner with us in those situations to bring his presence, to bring his power, to bring his fire, to bring his healing, to bring his love. And he wants to create a miracle in your life, but he wants to use you to do it. So yield to him today. Allow him into those hardest areas and start seeing him as bigger than you can imagine. Because with Christ, all things are possible. Not just some, not most, but all.